Listen to King Arthur, a book adaptation by Oxford Reading University, level B1. A long time ago in England, there was a wise and fair king named Uther. Things were good, and everyone in the land lived happily. King Uther wanted a magician in his court, so he chose the famous Merlin. Merlin could see the future, and he knew that the good times would end soon. King Uther and Queen Guinevere had a baby son. During a castle party for the new royal baby, Merlin spoke to the king privately. He said, Sire, there's something important you need to know. A great darkness will soon come over this land. Your child is in danger. Let me take the baby far away to keep him safe. Merlin! exclaimed the surprised king. You're a great magician and my friend, but there's no way we'd let anyone take our child away. Sadly, not long after the child was born, the queen passed away. Soon after that, King Uther was killed in battle. That very night, Merlin entered the castle and took the child. The next morning, the royal nurse went into the nursery only to find an empty crib. In fear, the nurse, along with the nobles and servants, searched everywhere, but the baby was gone. For years there was no king to sit on the throne, no king to set the laws. Men of high rank fought each other to be king. Those were the dark times. Bad men broke into houses and took whatever they wanted. People traveling on the roads were robbed, and everyone in England was scared. But in a faraway quiet place, a good knight named Sir Ector lived peacefully with his two sons. His first son was called Kay, and the younger son, Arthur, was adopted when he was a baby. A stranger had come to Sir Ector with the baby years ago, asking him to raise the child. The old knight was happy to have a second child. He named the baby Arthur and raised him like his own. When Arthur turned ten, the same stranger, who turned out to be Merlin the Magician, came back to Sir Ector's home. Since Merlin could read and write, Sir Ector hired him to teach his two sons. Kay couldn't sit still for lessons and stopped coming, but Arthur listened carefully and learned everything. Every day after Arthur finished his chores, Merlin would sit with him for hours and teach him about the world. Arthur was a thin boy, not strong like his big brother Kay, but Merlin said not to worry about that. He said having a big and strong heart mattered the most. Merlin saw birds, foxes and deer following Arthur and knew the boy had a very big and strong heart. When Arthur turned 16, his brother Kay became a knight called Sir Kay. Arthur loved serving his brother as a squire taking great care of his brother's weapons, his tunic, helmet, spears, and lances. One day during their lesson time, Merlin looked away and stood up. What's happening? asked Arthur. The people need hope, said Merlin. Arthur, there's something I must do. I must go now. That night, when it was very dark, Merlin the magician came to London's market square. He stood in the middle, raised both arms high and pointed his wand to the stars. The next morning, when the sun was just rising, people came to the market. Right there in front of them was something strange. A big piece of white rock stood in the middle of the town square. On top of it, there was a huge stone the size of a very large rock. At the very tip of the stone, there was a golden handle of a sword and a few inches of the blade shining in the sun. The rest of the blade was stuck deep in the stone. None of this was there the day before. What's more, there were words on the top of the blade. Men tried to pull the sword out. One after another, they pulled and pulled, but the sword didn't move. One person sadly said, there is no man alive who could pull out that sword. We'll see about that, a voice in the crowd said. The Duke of Cornwall, wearing fancy clothes, came up to the white rock. 
Listen, everyone, he said. I declare a tournament in one month. Knights from everywhere in England are invited. There will be contests, prizes, and a big feast for everyone. The Duke told his wife, the Duchess, this tournament will bring the strongest, finest knights in all of England. The Duchess said, Good idea, my dear. All we need is one knight strong enough to pull that sword from the stone. Then we'll have a king again, finally. The people were happy and cheered. Finally, there was something to be happy about. News of the tournament spread quickly, reaching the faraway home of Sir Ector. Sir Kay heard the news while polishing his helmet. Arthur! he shouted. Arthur was in the woods, feeding birds from his hand. He left a pile of seeds for the birds and another for the squirrels. Then he ran quickly to see his brother. There you are, said Kay. There's going to be a tournament in London. We must leave right away. What fantastic news. Arthur had never been far from home. He would be the best squire for his brother. Arthur ran back to the house. In the courtyard, his father was getting the horses ready. Sir Ector and his two sons rode through London on their way to the tournament. As they passed through the market square, something shiny caught Arthur's eye. That sword looks like it's stuck in that stone, Arthur said. How can it be? And why were guards standing all around him? The father and his two sons reached the tournament. Sir Kay went off to register, and Sir Ector greeted old friends. Arthur sat in their tent, polishing his brother's helmet until it shone brightly. A trumpet sounded. The tournament was about to start. Fetch my sword, Kay demanded. Do you like this story? Send it to your friends to enjoy it together. Hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get more audiobooks like this. Right away, said Arthur. But where was it? Arthur looked around in a panic. Kay's spear, battle axe and dagger were in their places, but the sword was nowhere to be found. Kay, Arthur said. How about a battle axe? Where's my sword? I'll get it in a moment, Arthur said. Hurry up, demanded Kay. Arthur rushed back into the tent. Could he have left Kay's sword there? He searched through the bag of armor and weapons, feeling worried. Then he had an idea. Quickly, Arthur rode back to the market square. The guards were gone. They must have left for the tournament. Arthur climbed up on the marble block. Let's see if that sword can come unstuck. He grabbed the handle and moved the sword a bit. Hey! he exclaimed. It's looser than I thought. With one big tug, the sword slid out. Arthur was thrown back, but he caught the sword safely. I'll bring it right back, he promised, and rushed to where his brother was waiting. Here it is, he said, handing the sword to Kay. Kay took one look. Oh, he said in surprise. What is it? asked Arthur. But Kay had already left. Soon after, Arthur heard his brother's voice outside the tent. Father, I have something to show you. Kay and his father stepped inside the tent. Look, said Kay, pointing to the sword. Sir Ector stared. His face turned white. Kay, said the father, facing his older son. Where did you get this sword? It's mine, claimed Kay, holding it close. I have it now. Kay, said the father again in a stern voice. I'll ask you one more time. Where did you get this sword? From Arthur, he admitted. He lost my sword. Somehow, he got this one. Arthur, the father turned to his younger son. How did you get this sword? I'm sorry, said Arthur. Father, I'll put it back right away. I only meant to borrow it when I pulled it from the stone. You must take us to where you found this sword, now. The three of them rushed over to the market square. Arthur climbed onto the marble block. It came from here, he said. He lifted the sword over his head. Then he dropped the blade back into the stone. 
Now it's back. Hey, said Sir Kay, I still need a sword. He jumped up onto the marble block, grabbed the hilt of the sword, and pulled and pulled. But it didn't move. Kay shouted to Arthur, What did you do to it? Nothing, said Arthur. You must have done something, yelled Sir Kay. Hush, both of you, said the father. It's better if no one sees or hears us. But it was too late. A crowd had already started to form. Hey, did you pull that sword out of the stone? Yes, said Arthur. I did. Do it again, called another from the crowd. Yes, let's see it. Arthur put his hands around the golden handle. With one tug, the blade slid out. Who are you? called another voice. What's your name? Arthur, said the lad. Wait a minute, put that sword back. A tall knight pushed forward from the crowd. Anyone can pull it out once it's been pulled. Go ahead, put it back, son, said a voice. It was the Duke of Cornwall, the one who had called for the tournament. All right, said Arthur. He slipped the blade back into the stone with ease. Let me try now said the tall knight. He jumped up and grabbed the handle of the sword, but the sword wouldn't move, not even a bit. Another knight tried, then another, but no one could move the sword. Some waited, thinking the longer they pulled, the looser it would get. But when each man took their turn, the sword didn't move. Let the lad try now, said the Duke of Cornwall. Arthur, go ahead. Arthur stepped up to the stone again. In one motion, he freed the sword. This time, he held it high above his head. The blade flashed in the sun. Amazed, the crowd didn't know what to think. At last, someone called out. He must be our new king. We have a king, called another. At last! Stop! shouted the tall knight. Do you really think this skinny boy should rule over all of us? Yes, said a voice. All eyes turned around. It was Merlin the magician. I know this boy. I know his heart. There is no one in England with a heart bigger and stronger than his. The sword has told us this young man is to be the next king of England. And there is something else. The lad, said Merlin, pointing to Arthur, is the true child of King Uther. He is the missing baby. Cheers began to ring out. Hail King Arthur, called someone from the crowd. Sir Ector fell to his knees, then Sir Kay. One after another, the crowd fell to their knees too. Everyone cheered. At last, a new king had been chosen. For more English books for all levels, check out appiwa.com. And now, watch this video. It will help you improve your English right now.